This video is a Mendistry PvP guide for playing on the version 7 Aerocure planet. The gameplay is from the beta release, and when I do experiments, that is in the Bleeding Edge release, which has some balance changes that are not present in the beta. The first concept that you need to know is that all of the low tier defensive turrets on Aerocure are garbage and have no stopping power. This demonstration is each type of tier 1 unit fighting the equivalent price of a breach. As the fight plays out, you'll see that the breach loses every fight against the same cost, uh, and barely any of the units die. Uh, for cost effectiveness, all of the units are much better than the most basic turret. Suppose you want to kill something on the other side of a turret. How effective is it to ignore it and just walk past it? One unit of each T1 type. The tank takes most of its health and damage. The mech does not survive, and the elude lives up to its name. In fact, the elude has so much health left that it can go back for two or three more passes. Now even more. What happens when a group of T1 units try to ignore a turret? Notice how the rotation speed of the turrets causes the DPS to drop a lot as things go around them. Also notice how no units at all died, even the mechs which were the worst at walking past turrets. These entire groups can do multiple passes safely. Uh, the turrets have no stopping power if you have any amount of T1 stored up. Does defense work any better if you add more turrets? These are groups against four turrets. Turrets are expensive, so this costs four times as much to set up. The tanks and the mechs do worse, although there are still a lot of them getting through. The eludes still completely untouched. This is T1 units trying to ignore a diffuse, the second earliest turret. Viable defense. So Diffuse is good at blocking a choke point, but what happens when T1 units fight it directly? Every T1 outranges it, and the knockback actually pushes the units out of range so that the Diffuse can't kill them. Let's apply this information to a real game. I've got four eludes and a tank. He's got two breaches, a wall with a two size gap, and I can just fly right through it. All the eludes survive, and I can start taking out economy targets. Uh, you want to get unit factories, you want to get silicon, arcs, power plants, all sorts of defenseless stuff back here. That's an elude rush. You can just fly past everything and start shooting the valuable stuff and shut them down. Uh, at this point, he's basically crippled. He's got no power, uh, took out the most expensive things, and then I can just leave. I didn't lose anything. This experiment shows the only cost-effective way to stop an elude rush, which is walling off completely. You still need to get units out, use a door, the doors work well, unlike Circulo and V6. Uh, and better walls are much better because they have more armor, and eludes are very vulnerable to armor with their DPS split between four different bullets per shot. You can even use heat distributors as walls because they build much faster. You can protect yourself from an elude rush by building walls, but the attacker still has options for getting around that. This test has T1 mechs 
going against the same walled up setup and they're just gonna walk past everything uh, as before. Combine that with the ability of them to shoot over obstacles and target infrastructure, and these are the best choice if you wanna micromanage an attack. All right, here's a, another example of an elude raid from a, a game. So this has no prepared defense or walls or turrets. He's got a number of tanks, but they're positioned badly in the very back of his base. So I can just fly in and kill his core, and that'll take care of all that economy. I move forward, and he starts to pull his tanks forward. They've got their slow and their mobility is restricted. So I can shoot over this wall and start hitting uh, stuff with ozone in it, which will blow up and do even more damage. Once the tanks start to get close, I can run away. I'm two and a half times faster than them. Uh, even though I've got like, what, one third as many units? Half? Uh, and I can go around the tanks and hit some of the stuff up here. There's some more things with ozone in them that I can shoot at. Once the tanks get away from that gap, uh, then I can go back and kill this power plant. And there we go. Those are full of ozone, they will all blow up. Boom. Let me just run around in circles. Uh, the tanks move away from the choke point, and as soon as they're gone, I can just leave again. And that is how excessive mobility and a bunch of damage can do so much. Uh, another point there, you can't build a breach when you're under attack because it takes 10 seconds to build and can be interrupted instantly. Next, I'm gonna talk about economy and building. The two main things that you're gonna be building for are either getting more building materials or unit factories. And the way my server is set up, you want as many unit factories as you can because you need a lot of units to overcome whatever the other side is building and take over the whole map. You probably want unit schematics and you probably want at least one for each type. This is an example of my elude schematic. So there's three factories that'll use the silicon output of one arc furnace thing, which is uh, embedded in the schematic. And then I've got inputs for graphite and sand. Uh, the eludes are the easiest units to build because it only takes two inputs to make them and the power. Uh, all the, the other T1 units also need beryllium and you do the higher tier units, uh, you additionally need titanium and hydrogen uh, and further on, more stuff. Uh, on the schematics, I also add uh, extra text that tells me or reminds me, like, how many sand drills do you need? How many graphite drills? How many brilliant drills? That sort of thing. Uh, so that I can know what I need to wire into it to, to have it working. And another thing to note is that you always need more beryllium than you think you need because it's in all the recipes. Uh, same thing with titanium. Uh, you need like four or five drills to keep going at a good clip building and not running out. So it looks like micromanagement is going to enable units to punch way above their weight. Uh, so things like pushing a tank closer to a turret to draw fire away from weaker targets, or using Marie's artillery to shoot over walls and hit infrastructure behind it, uh, are gonna be really effective in determining the outcome of individual battles. 
I have a couple demonstrations with higher tier units or turrets. This is a sublimate. The damage is pretty good on it, but it's fueled by ozone, which is vulnerable to explosions in the infrastructure, and it's outranged by two of the T1 units. So they definitely have their weaknesses. This one is a few T2 units against a breach with a little bit of wall and maximum boosting. Notice how the point defense on the mechs keep them almost completely safe. Uh, it takes more T2 air to actually get through, but they do it. Two tier two locusts almost win their fight. Tier two ships, the averts, are even more mobile than eludes and a big threat to any soft economic target on the battlefield. The turret that is supposed to defend against those, the disperse, well, how well does that actually work? The basic ammo killed nothing out of a flight of 15. Uh, adding water killed a little more. Adding walls does a little bit better, but it still can't stop this attack. Let's see how much more wall the disperse needs to compete. Two layers of beryllium get cut through, and it's basically on par. Only two averts left. A tungsten or a surge wall, and the disperse comes out ahead. All right, last one of these. This is the afflict. I think the afflict is the first turret that is actually useful for something and reasonably priced. Uh, it actually has some area of effect, so it can counter concentrated force. It fights air and land, and it can do a lot of damage to a big mass of army. Uh, it took out many of those T2 ships. It took out all the mechs. It did a bunch of damage to all that air. Summary. Uh, all the early turrets are bad. The best you can hope for from building them is you will lose slower. Uh, elude rushes are the main thing going on in the early game and the only way you can protect yourself from them is building uh, solid walls that completely block off your delicate economic stuff from the outside world. Masses of units are pretty much uniformly better than defensive structures. The first turret that's actually worth anything is I think it's the Afflict. Yeah, yeah, that's enough to sort of cover all the early stuff. Uh, I'm going to have to do more of these, I think, because there's a lot more tech tree that eventually people are going to get to regularly, and there's going to be balancing changes both in the core game itself and stuff I'm doing to my server to try and overcome the bad balance of the core game as it exists at any given moment. So... Yeah, look forward to that. I'll try and have some actual full games coming through also to either be pulling examples from or uh, going through them like I did the V6 games.